to talk. Uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll shut down I'll shut down my air conditioner. I uh, appreciate that, Raina. There Thank you go. You. Now it's nice and quiet. So if you do start to see me sweat, it's because I've turned off the air con. Hey, <laughs> well, I had nice. to turn mine up. It's it, it's warm out where I'm at today. Where are you at? Uh, I'm in Tulsa, so we got over 100 degrees oh. right now. Oh, yeah. And probably yeah. for a long time to come. Well, Tulsa is known for its heat. <laughs> yeah. It is an absolute pleasure to finally meet you, Raina. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to talk about Havina. Uh, yeah. Can you introduce Havina to me? What, uh, who is this person that we speak of? So Havina is and was the first female Mockland. And I go back, I began in season one, episode three, where the whole issue, you know, when you look at season one, it's about character building and world building. Mm -hmm. So we learn that the Mocklins are a male only species and that what they do is uh, if a child is born a female, well, they do a certain procedure that turns them into male. And so this comes up on the ship, on the union ship is their uh, Bortus and Clyden are having a baby. And they want uh, Dr. Penny to um, do the procedure. And of course, uh, Captain Mercer has a great problem with this whole idea of the babies being realigned, as I think it, it, most of us would. And yeah. so he has his crew research and try to find a way of how they can get around this and mm. basically through their research he finds out that actually there is a living female mocklet who's mm. been hiding in the mountains all her life and the first little scene where you see me is when they come to the cave and mm. find me and and obviously between scenes um he explains to me what's happening and i show up in the courtroom where I have that beautifully written monologue. Oh, yeah, very much so. And we got yeah. to revisit that monologue. And we got to revisit that in episode five and mm -hmm. uh, New Horizons scene three, uh, season three. And I thought, you know, they'd probably just take the original and then somehow kind of do CGI and put mm -hmm. Topher in there to kind of look at it. But, oh, no, 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 no. These guys don't work that way. They no. go for the very <laughs> You're talking, you're talking next level. Yeah. The Seth McFarlane and his creative crew and his heads of department. I mean, these are Oscar winners, these people. And they just, they don't compromise. They're going to go, no, nope, we're going to mm -hmm. do this whole thing. And so they sent me the whole storyboard. They sent me the original clip so I could prepare to recreate the scene. And mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing to do because you, you really have to study it and go, well, how did I do that line? What did I feel at that moment? No, you have to do an impression of yourself. It, exactly. But we did. We nailed it. And in fact, when I watched it, I'm like, did they use some takes from the original scene? Because it was that spot on. Yeah, I and edited both both scenes side by side together uh, and just so I could see what was new, what was from the original episode. And uh, wow, it lines up just so beautifully. It was. It was spot on. And I think, you know, which is like what I think Seth, Seth may have thought in his mind, when you've got them all in that room together, the emotion it brings to the scene, it was just incredible because it's there. It's like happening for the first time mm. versus, well, this is just Topa watching that speech on a TV screen, so to speak. It just gave it the, the poignancy that yeah. it needed to help her character make that decision about, you know what, I want to be what I was born to be. Exactly. And, um, which then, of course, le le leads to uh, episode eight, which was <laughs> Sanctuary, <huge>. yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, Century was in season two. Topa doesn't come in until... Um... Oh, you mean that? Yeah, the last... Yeah, the, I know. What you're I, I got stuck on season two real quick. I didn't realize you're talking about season three, yes. which has been amazing. Almost every episode is a tearjerker. It, it, it's, 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 look, New Horizons is exactly that. It's New Horizons. Seth mm -hmm. and his team have just... Uh, including his uh, series regulars have just taken the show to a whole nother level. It's 
it's as good as it gets when it comes to sci-fi. Uh, yeah, genre. I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, it keeps keeps you on the edge of your seat, right? You just don't know what's going to happen next, which is what makes it so exciting. Yeah, and Havina, even though she shows up a little bit in each season, she is such a prominent character, and, and she she's basically the Harriet Tubman of the future. And that's, uh, a, that's a great way to look at her. Thank, that's an enormous compliment. But you, you're right, the, the kind of woman they both are mm -hmm. and their conviction and their purpose and the whole railway, railway road of smuggling, mm -hmm. you know, to save females in Havina's case, that, that's a great, I'm going to use that. <laughs> really cool. you go ahead that's yours that's yours to use now uh, so <laughs> many so many of the fans really uh the character of, of Havina is so important to them I've I've had um uh, a, a friend of mine want to wanted me to tell you how important that character is for so many different types of minorities or, or different types of people being um oppressed by uh, whoever's oppressing them for just for being who they are or in the case of Topa, just being born the way they are, which seems like a simple thing to us. They're born female. What's wrong with that? But the Mocklins have a problem with that. So well, have, I think this is where you, you're getting your, your visionaries like your George Lucas's and your Steven Spielberg's, your Seth MacFarlane's. Mm -hmm. is that they, they, I mean, if you look at the season, it's uncanny what's going on in our society today. And these were written three years ago. Yeah. I mean, the whole episode about abortion. Yeah, that I was mean, that was prophetic almost. They And that's visionaries. They are mm -hmm. so ahead of the times and they are creating stuff that at the time some people may not get, but you look back and go, oh my God, it yeah. absolutely was you know, prophetic what, what Seth has created in New Horizons. And this whole thing I think about Havina is that she does represent what's been a very big conversation in the world about just being your best you mm -hmm. and just allowing people to be who they are, even if it's something we don't agree with, just respecting basic human rights or yeah. Mockman rights in this uh, case. But um, that's what we all want. We just all want to be accepted for who we are. Exactly. And I think the Orville has done something that very few shows do which is allow you to see through the eyes of someone's point of view you might have never even considered before absolutely and and it excels where it doesn't judge or mm -hmm. preach it just gives you the story and it lets you as the audience go home and and just think well how did i feel about that particular character how did i feel about gently falling rain i think was just another stunning episode where yeah um it, it's just that and then the two lives uh scott grimes's episode they're just i mean it's just been extraordinary episodes yeah you know i feel it makes this show makes us better people if, if you're watching it and you're and you're taking it in and and, and and letting it affect you and and speaking of havina we have to talk about another very important woman uh dolly parton <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Go Dolly! <laughs> yeah, you, you can't have you can't have a Havina conversation without talking about Dolly. Um, <laughs> did you? I know it was filmed separately because of the restrictions and, and well, stuff. No, no, it's kind of yeah, it, it, yeah. There's been a bit of confusion about it. We were actually in the same room. Um, what what happened is um, they shipped half of her, the set, so her wall her back wall to Nashville. Mm -hmm. And um, John Caesar talks, uh, goes into detail about it as there's Tom on his page about, uh, because we were in the midst of COVID, there was very strict rules. There could only be four of us. Mm -hmm. So that was Seth McFarlane, John Caesar, myself and Tammy Lane, who did my Hovina prosthetics. Mm -hmm. um, Howard Burger, as you know, is head of the department and he's, he does uh, Havina's makeup and so does Tammy Lane. So he sent Tammy, Tammy with me because they had a lot of, to shoot back in, at Fox Studios. And we basically, Seth put us on a private plane. We flew over on a Tuesday afternoon. And because of the time difference, we got there around eight o'clock, 8.30, we got tested. 
Mm-hmm. As soon as we landed, we had dinner, we went to sleep, got up early. I got into the, the whole Havina takes at least an hour. Um, and then we out came Dolly. <laughs> 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 it's like, yeah. uh, what was your impression of her getting, uh, getting to work with her? Just, well, it, it, it was surreal. I, I really thought it was like, because obviously I had read the scene, uh, but as they do, they have to keep everything under wraps, particularly something like Dolly. And it really wasn't till the day before we were at Disney Hall shooting the, all the council stuff in the wonderful Disney Hall. And Seth that morning said, are you looking forward to going to Nashville tomorrow? And I'm like, oh, I'm going, I'm going. It's, <laughs> it's happening. This happening. <laughs> and um, she, with Dolly, what you see is what you get. She is just the sweetest, kindest, most beautiful soul with the biggest heart. Mm-hmm. And, and talented. And oh, well, then she sang to me. I mean, look at how good does it get? Dolly Parton sang to me. And then <laughs> I genuinely cried because she's just, she's an icon. You know, mm. she's American royalty. She's a, a, a legend. And and you see with people like this, why people, she has so many fans because she gets back what she gives. She gives so much love. She's so supportive. And if you look at all the things she supports, with whether that's financially or in person, she showed up and supported the awful. I mean, and I'm going to tell you, as I've said only once before, she was an absolute pro. She was mm. off her page. She had all her dialogue down. She had her performance down. And when we, we only had till 12 o'clock. And mm. at 12 o'clock, uh, she said to me at the end of it, she said, well, maybe I should come to LA now so I can be there to support you when they shoot your sides. <laughs> <laughs> we, we knew that wasn't possible yeah. because of COVID mm. and because of the fragility of flying and everything else. And... So when we got back to the Fox studio, I think it was the following week, if not the week after, then we shot the Havina signs. Mm -hmm. Because literally when you're doing coverage, in in a normal day, in a normal scene with actors or whoever, the camera will set up this way and shoot everything that way. So it'll Mm -hmm. shoot your wide shot, your medium shot, your close up, and then it turns around Mm -hmm. and it would shoot the other characters like Havina's close ups and mediums. Um, But we couldn't do that on the day because, one, we only had Dolly for that very limited two to three hours. And secondly, even if we'd had extra time, they didn't bring Havina's back wall. So we couldn't Mm. have turned around, (laughs) you know, even if we had the time to do it. Um, But it was also the kind of scene you really needed to take your time with. And once again, these geniuses, Seth and John Caesar and and Brandon Brannigan and, and all that department just... They had they had it down. They just it's attention to detail that gives you quality, and they had mapped out how that whole scene was going to be put together. And they actually also did a rehearsal with me the night we were out shooting the uh, the scenes at the sanctuary. They said, "Hey, we're going to just you know we did a rough rehearsal of how I was going to walk in and physically kneel down, and the special effects guys were there to kind of film it and mm-hmm. then go away and map it out because." You kind of need to do that, not just in an instance where you've got someone like Dolly with limited limited uh, time, but this is how we worked when we shot films on celluloid. Mm-hmm. We didn't have extra celluloid. Mm-hmm. And, and to this time day, was money even more so day, back then. And, and the best director to this day, film-wise, that I've ever worked with was Lee Tamahori. Mm-hmm. who directed Once Were Warriors with me and Timuetta Timu Morrison, mm-hmm. um, Django Fett, back in 1994, because we had limited celluloid. He had to cross every T and dot every I to literally know exactly how he was going to shoot each scene. And we'd do six to eight setups a day. You did not have extra celluloid on low-budget independent filmmaking. Different now with filmmakers who shoot their movies on digital because they can mm-hmm. do thousands of takes, but that's another story. Yeah, it's uh, speaking of the physicality of Havina and the performance that you're giving while your face is covered up in a, in a cowl, prosthetics, um, the amount of emotion that you're able to exude 
behind that mask is 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 really uh, absolutely amazing. What's it like working with all that get up Thank on? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've done quite a few prosthetics uh, throughout my my career, different times, different characters. In fact, I was one of the I was the number one biggest prosthetics for Angel. Mm -hmm. where I played Dinza, the goddess of lost creatures, and mm -hmm. almost human uh, did those prosthetics. And that was a seven hour uh, wow. toe to fingers. And I had wings and um, that was a big deal. <laughs> those prosthetics, um, it, that was a lot of work. Um, this one is, Havina is much easier because it really is just my head but it's not so much a mask it, because the, the the back of it is it kind of goes over mm -hmm. and then it strips. This is put on then that's put on then that's put on, that's put on. So it's still my face. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I'm going to be honest as an actress, it's the one reason why I can't do Botox because I'm a character actor mm -hmm. and my face needs to move. <laughs> 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 you know yeah, you got to be able to feel feel yeah, the, the exactly. pieces you've got to be able to my face needs to move so I can't go go and freeze it um and so the 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 prosthetics or that extra it's like an extra layer of skin it moves with my face and I I'm very animated uh but first and foremost uh you got to feel it, it deep inside I'm an inside out actor so I feel it Mm -hmm. And and as my simple theory as an actor is my job isn't what it looks like. That's a director's job. That's cinematographer's job. Brilliant cinematographer on season season three. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and the wardrobe and makeup, they are the ones that look at the monitor and look at it. My job is what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And um, so I stay focused on what it feels like. So I'm, that, I'm just that kind of breed of actor where I feel my way through everything I work intuitively so if I'm feeling as I learned a long time ago feeling what I need to feel and thinking what I need to think is that character in the, that moment of time then the physical takes care of itself it's as a result of my face moves as a result of what I'm feeling mm -hmm. um, so I agree though it, it's always even with Bortus and Clyden and all the creatures mm -hmm. good actors no matter what's on their face, we project. Yeah, I get a lot of uh, emotion from the Mocklins because, you know, Chad L. Coleman, Peter Macon, they're all so great. Um, and, and you, one of my favorite lines from Havina, uh, as far as, you know, the way I feel watching her was the line from uh, the original courtroom or the hearing scene on Mocklins where she, she simply says, and I am happy. That line... And, and the emotion coming through, I mean, I just feel it. And, and, um, and, and the gravitas behind it, the context of it, you know, you, you, you're going, you're, you're, you're living your life and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And the fact that you're saying, and I am happy as if, as if you know, because the Mocklins are probably thinking, oh, she would never be happy to, to be female on, on our planet, mm -hmm. but she was. And that just lets people know, be yourself, do what you do and that's where happiness will come from that's a very very powerful message you know and i think to go back she talks about her parents you know who mm. knew that they didn't want their child to be subjected to that that it would be a violation mm -hmm. against how she was created and how she was born and i think that's what we've seen a lot more of in this days in this day and age as parents uh, allowing or aiding their children to be different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it wasn't so easy uh, for a lot of my generation and the, God, my mother's generation and the generations before us. I mean, we live in a totally different world now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I, I grew up in the 60s, 70s, so yeah, you know, we didn't even have a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Like, I didn't grow up with a cell phone either, and I exactly, and I know, feel lucky that. that I have the memories of not having that. So I'm 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 able to see 
the distraction that it is and put it down sometimes. Well, that's right. And I think we're all seeing that. We're all seeing and also think, thinking, well, thank God certain aspects of our lives weren't documented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I, did, I wasn't born to make a documentary of my life. I no, was born to live it. No. <laughs> that's right. So it's kind of, it, it, you know, there's pluses and minuses to everything. But the fact that Havina's parents, her parents were the trailblazers. And mm. I think she... She, it's what's driven her is the gift that her parents gave her. Havina is obligated to use that gift mm -hmm. of being able and having the freedom to live as a female to then turn around and open that door to enable other female, Mocklin females to have a life as a happy female Mocklin and it's something I angst over and I'm sure you'll understand that whole scene where she strategizes with Topa mm -hmm. about getting Topa in the mix there because it's almost like she can't help herself because there is the solution right in front of her it's taking it's difficult the system they have it's slow and it's tedious and it takes a long time to just rescue one baby. But if you had mm. someone right there on the oval who could just press that button. Um, but I did angst about that. You yeah. know, the In the moment, it seemed like it was, Havina was thinking of the greater good and not the... It was absolutely the greater good. And I had many conversations with Seth because he knew I was angsting. And I'm like, because she's just a child. Yeah. And he'd go, look, 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 this is what revolutionary people do for the greater good, for the greater good. She's not, to be fair on Havina, we all think the bad Mocklin guys have gone. Mm -hmm. So we're not, I'm not thinking, well, if I proposition Topa, that there's going to be any negative consequences. Yeah. Because all of the characters, I mean, at the, the dining scene, it's when it said, oh, they've already left. Yeah. You know, and so Havina's calculating that. And in fact, you see it when they're in the room, at the, her office with Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. And um, Topa says to her, I want to know more about your 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 revolution. And, and, and you can see it in Havina's eyes. She goes, our. Yeah. Opportunity was right yeah, there. You can see the clock is the wheel is turning about mm. oh my god this is more than just a gift of finally meeting Topa and having that history with her and Imani was just ah uh, you know the, there is that saying that actors shouldn't work with children or animals but for me it's just it never gets more magical mm -hmm. just looking at that young woman that that innocence that purity she, she is gifted i think that that imani's gonna have an enormous career because there's yeah a, she's great simplicity and a truth and an openness and a vulnerability about her she's just magical working with her i just have to look at her and she'd make me cry so yeah. um listen you know i know we're gonna wrap up soon and i'm gonna say this to whoever your listeners are is that i was born very very emotional that's the way god made me i was <laughs> hypersensitive and overly emotional child and it wasn't easy for my my mum and my brothers and sister because i was always cry 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 at the drop of a hat I was <laughs> so, so sensitive but the irony is now i get paid to cry <laughs> and, it, and it's working very well for the orville that is, Thank that you. is for sure so um, i do believe we're given gifts we're born with certain gifts for a certain reason so just relish those gifts and utilize them whenever you can yeah and also uh, being uh, extra sensitive growing up means you can see what other people are going through uh Absolutely. you know if they're if they're too sensitive you can kind of understand why or if they're not sensitive enough uh you can maybe see them trying to hide or protect themselves uh from their emotions which a lot of people do uh but yeah Havina is definitely an Orville icon and that's thanks to you and I want to thank you for for having this chat with me I wish we could just go on for hours and hours and hours because I got lots of things uh character wise that I'd love to talk about but uh, I'll do it again. Look, I, I'm always happy to. Uh, I'm always 
happy to talk about something we're all passionate about and and it really is a, a privilege and I, i'll just forever be very grateful to seth for choosing me when i went in those years ago 2017 uh to audition you know i'm mm. i'm glad he chose me for havina because he already in his head and you can see it in season two season three he's already got storylines and mm -hmm. years and character journeys already you know when he bought introduced dolly in 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 um season two sanctuary when he mm -hmm. turned savina on to dolly yeah i'm sure seth even way back then thought okay we go to season three i gotta find a way of bringing dolly back yeah that would be great well the orville can time travel sometimes now Yes, it can. So but maybe we'll it, get the real dolly, not the holographic dolly. Yeah, yeah. But we we were really um, so lucky and so blessed, and to to be able to actually be there in person to create that scene with Dolly. And and again, it takes an enormous person like Dolly to make that happen and say, "Hey, this is this is great. This, I've, I've never done something like this. I'd love to support these guys. It's clever." It's brilliant. She's my hero. You know, she's Helena's yeah. hero, and she's a hero to many people out there. So it was my privilege and ab absolute pleasure to have done that that scene with with the one and only Dolly Parton. And yeah. um, thanks again to 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 our cre to Helena's creator Seth McFarlane and all the writers and John Caesar, our director, and the entire cast and crew who made this show. It's so goddamn good, New Horizons. Yes. It really, really is. A, a lot of people are saying it's the best sci-fi they have ever seen. Wow. And sci-fi is just a bit of it. I mean, it's a it's a it's a show telling stories, human truths, yeah. and, and and exploring the human condition, which is what I appreciate so much about the series. And uh, we have no idea yet if we're getting a season four, but fingers crossed. But and we, we don't put our fingers crossed. Yeah, sure. we don't know Havina's fate yet. We got a couple episodes to go, but hopefully we'll see her more as well. Well, I think there's two clues we've got so far about the last two episodes, nine and ten. Nine is called domino. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a, obviously a domino effect of what went down yeah. in eight, because literally now Mocklin's out of the union the, you know mm. you've got the crew you've got all the elements there of like this could lead to war and then of course the last episode is aptly <clears throat> sorry titled uh unknown future yeah so, yeah unknown future so the titles in themselves give us clues I, i'm so excited like you guys i can't wait i can't wait to see and then hopefully we'll get an announcement which will make the future known <laughs> for that the orville good. uh that, fingers that, crossed in that that would be good. No, I'm with you guys um, because I just think it's a phenomenal show and I think they've just earned that fourth season with, with season three. And it's actually a miracle, really, that it got shot and it did take so long because a little uh, behind the scenes fact here is in 2020, March, April, April 2020, I'd had my my pre-production appointments, which is you, you meet with the uh, makeup artist, Howard Burge. He said, oh, you still look the same, so we don't have to do a lot of changes with Havina's makeup. I met with the wardrobe, the cost, phenomenal costume designer, and uh, I was about to go in and film my first scene on mm -hmm. Monday. And on that Sunday, I got the call. We're pulling the plug. The order oh. is shutting down. Yeah. So it got shut down for 2020 and yeah. they, they tried again to start up again November later at the end of the year but then the, kept getting it shut down and then finally I finally got to do my parts in April 2021 so that's the reason why there was that extra year because we lost a whole year yeah due, and due to COVID and from what we from 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 this season the quality of it and the and just how big it is this show deserves to go un you know uh, it deserves to to do a season without any problems just keep filming it and doing what uh uh seth has uh, wants to create uh so hopefully we get that fourth season and they can just have a an easy time doing all the work that they want to do 
fin fingers crossed because I think if we get a season four, if the Orville gets a season four, then it's it's just going to blow everybody's minds because I think New, New, New Horizons has just blown everybody's minds, including all of us who work in it. And it's like, man, you know, you always have to go with everything, whether it's a film or if you're doing a sequel to a film or a TV show your next season, you always aspire to top what has come before. So not only Dolly, I mean, could Dolly come back in, in season four? One would hope so, but... Maybe she'll become part of the crew. <laughs> Oh, I think, yeah, she's got a busy life. But I tell you right now, as an actor, I know this to be true. When you you watching great shows, there are a ton of actors out there that, that will be going, hey, Seth, I'd I want to come and do an episode. Hey, Seth, I want to come and do an episode. Because that's what actors do. We want to be on good shows. We want to go and have fun and get great material and work with good people. Mm -hmm. um, so I think season four would be epic in terms of guest stars. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Including you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. I'm uh, sure you got a, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, Zoom is about to stop recording anyway, because there's a time limit, I guess. But thank you so much. I mean, seriously, we'll just have to go out to dinner sometime and, and chat about all this. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I ain't going to come to the desert during summer. Mark my words. I have, oh, yeah. What I have the... very good friends living where where you're living. And I went actually went through Arizona last year around this time. Mm -hmm. And I finally went to the Grand Canyon. And uh, I said, oh, my God, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of that town we stopped in in Arizona before the, um, the Hoover Dam. And it's, it's just, I loved it. I loved mm -hmm. it. Uh, and sorry, I'm not thinking the name of that town, but it's quite iconic. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could probably go through a few, but I mean, what's the yeah, point? It's a, a hot desert. Arizona town. Yeah, it's right before you cross into Nevada. Yeah, maybe <laughs> Winslow or something. It's like a diner. It's like a diner from the 50s, 60s. Oh, maybe. I mean, there's Winslow. There's uh, I also want the sound with the tree in its name. Oh, well. Oh, well. We'll have, we'll, have, we'll have lunch and dinner there one day. Hey, I'll let you yeah. know. But hopefully we can do this again and, and talk more story about uh, what we're all very, very passionate about is that that world of sci-fi. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. I, I'm blessed. I mean, I don't say this often, but it's a fact. I'm the only female in the world to have worked with both George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Wow. And I'm going to add Seth MacFarlane to that. You know, there's only six actors who've worked with uh, those uh, Spielberg and Lucas, but I'm actually the only female. Mm. And so now here I am, thanks to Seth MacFarlane. I'm the first female Mocklin. Yeah, I was going to say, you're one of the only females <laughs> that was on that was on Mockless. Pretty, pretty damn cool. Pretty yeah. damn cool, you know. I think I'll have to write the book one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being Mocklin. Hey, that's a good title. All right, dude. I've got to put my air conditioner back on now because, yeah, I'm getting hot right now. And uh, um, nice to speak with you. And hopefully we'll do it again another day, eh? Uh, absolutely. I'm up for it. Anytime you want. Thank you so much. Thank All right. So bye much. now. Stay cool. All bye. right. Bye now. Thank you, Raina. Uh, Thank you, oh, JP. Good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Right Thank now. you, guys. We've got to come up Thank with that so line. May that well, we can't do the force be with you. We've got to come up with something for the old bill. Well, Seth did it in the trailer, so what did he do? Did he say the, did he say may the force be with you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, watch the season three trailer again. Yeah, oh, he, he couldn't help himself, eh? <laughs> yeah, and now that's what a lot of the fans say when they're talking about the orbit. They say, May the force be with you. <laughs> wow. Well, I think I'm going to, we have to make something a little bit more uniquely the Orvillians, though. Yeah. Well, I always tell, I always say Jalo Jalong and Prosper, which is uh, a Bordis, uh, Bordis's Jaloja mixed with Star Trek, Live Long and Prosper. Live, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ponder upon that. If I come up with any, with a line of genius, don't worry. I'll put it out there. Yeah. I'll put it out there, hashtag it, and I'll be sharing it all over the place. Well, I'll be watching you guys and watching everything as we watch episode nine and ten. I, Ooh, I can't, can't wait. wait. I can't wait tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow we have to tomorrow. wait, but I can't wait. I know.
It was like this last week. It's been like that with every episode. It's like mm-hmm. as soon as it's available, I'm on there. I'm watching it. Yeah, I watch so, as soon as it comes out. Enjoy the home run, guys, and we'll see you again soon, hopefully. All right, bye now. Bye. bye. Take care. Bye. I know. Go, Dolly. Bye.